in the African American community, the church is the, the backbone. That there's so many people that I know that they grow up in the church and they grow up hearing a very negative message about what it is to have a a same sex attraction or um, the evils of thinking that you're born in the wrong body. So I wanted to bring in the, the more spiritual side of, of this discussion. Why is it that the religious community is determined to focus on kind of part of the Bible and not to embrace the entire community? Well, first let me say welcome to everyone. Again, my name is Reverend Russ Thornhill, and you are in the House of Unity Fellowship of Christ Church of Minority AIDS Project. Uh, and and I, I want to share. I'm gonna. I want to go back and share. I'm gonna answer your question, and I also want to share on this um, the psychotherapy piece. Uh, but in terms of answering your question, um, they're in fear of what they don't know and what they don't understand for themselves. You know, many of them and. The, my experience in working with many preachers down through the years, even through this, this working with HIV and AIDS in the community, is that they, they are learning from what they heard from somebody else who was not a learned individual around the issues. Okay, so they're just carrying on stories of things that they've heard. So they'll pick up a piece from the Bible, not that they had gone to somebody's school to learn about it, but they heard about it from somebody else and then carried on that story. Okay, so, and, 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 then, and then as it relates to the families, the families will hear the same story and they will hold that story as being true because the preacher said it. So I'm not going to question the preacher, you don't question the black church, you don't question the preacher, you know. So, so if the preacher said it, it must be true. So mama's not going to question the preacher but she, she sure is going to say something about it to her son. Okay, so in, in our church, and it was it was somewhat depicted in the in the film, but um, Archbishop Carl Bean, who is still living, breathing, and talking about these issues, as I just saw him today, he's still living and breathing and talking about these issues. And 30 years ago, when he started Unity Fellowship Church, a, a number of the preachers that you saw in the film, they weren't talking about these kinds of. You know, so as so as he brought this to life, then other people began to feel comfortable with sharing and saying and and, and, and affirming and so on. So now you now you hear these affirmations of, of, of love and acceptance going throughout many churches throughout the community, but it started with, with, with this one man in nineteen eighty two and no one else was doing it. So we'll come back and talk about that some more. But I want to I, I do want to touch on this piece on the, the, the psychiatry and the therapy piece. Uh, because I'm an individual who is in therapy. And I say that to people openly because I think it's important for us to normalize therapy. Okay, Everything that you said is true. And there's a therapist here in the audience that will, that will verify that everything you said is true. But for many people, it will be scary to hear that. And they'll want to run in the other direction because you're going to open up what? With all the different things that you said. And an important piece for our community here is, is just like we just like we go into a Weight Watchers program, just like we go into um, for a medical checkup, like we go into the dentist, we do all of those kinds of things to, you know, we go into a, a beauty salon or a barbershop and that sort of thing. It's also important for us to take charge of our mind, okay? And if that means that we need to go in and sit with somebody and have a conversation, you know, a therapist, then that's, that's something that we need to do. So we need to talk about therapy so it becomes normalized for people to feel comfortable about doing it. And through my spiritual counseling, people are not always comfortable with that. You know, they're, they're a fear of going there. You know, what are, what are they going to do? What are they going to open up? Not understanding it. And that's why it's important, I think, for us, and I always do that. I always say that I'm one that's in therapy and real comfortable and love doing it, you know, love going there. 
Uh, so it begins to normalize that for, for me. There are two things about what you're just talking about, I think, which is very important. Um, three things, actually. One is to normalize it through reiteration that you are actually in therapy as a black man. Because why? One is that we know there's a saying in the black community, you don't talk in business to strangers. You don't talk in business. And we have been inculturated through oppression and from slavery not to talk in business because it reveals a weakness. It reveals that you are no longer as, as the quintessential or expected man that you're supposed to be. But what is also more important about this documentary is that not only are black men and black gay men coming out in front of everybody, they're going in front of a camera and telling their story, which is every one of our stories. And like you were talking about running from the issue, they're bringing it in your face. You can't run anymore. You can't hide from this. That's a good point. I, I think that therapy is the living norm. Um, living in LA, I'm originally from Florida, and I, I've recently come out uh, to LA. And it's, it's a part of the system here. You, know, you, you have a gym membership. Um, you, uh, you, you carpool see a mental health professional. But um, that's why I think that, that more people should watch this movie to understand that it is okay to see a mental health professional. So I kind of want to open up the, the conversation to Lester. Um, Lester was uh, featured in this project and he also has a, uh, a song on the, the project called Demons. What was it like Lester um, working on this project and have you um, what's what's been the the impact or the conversation that has come from you uh, producing this song uh, within the community as far as the impact I didn't really realize how important this documentary was gonna affect people's lives. In other words, I knew I was doing something meaningful, but you don't really see that impact until after it's over, and then you start promoting it, and, and people start seeing it, and people start reacting to it. You know what I mean? Like yesterday, or even today, I actually saw a, a woman break down and cry after she watched the documentary, and she was saying, thank you for sharing this documentary. It really touched me. So that, to me, says it all. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm saying. If the documentary can reach just one person and it can change that person's life, then his job is done because that's the goal of this documentary is to reach people and to touch people's lives. So I'm just so proud to be a part of this project and uh, I know it's going to do bigger and better things because it's a great piece. One of the uh, key pieces to this movie was not feeling uh, when individuals were coming to terms with themselves not feeling comfortable with themselves at first and turning to kind of risky behaviors, risky sex, or kind of self-medicating to get through their problems. What are some ways in which that people of color or just gay men, gay women in general, how can we be more comfortable with ourselves and prevent us from moving towards risky behavior, such as um, participating in unsafe sex or self-medicating through food drugs. One of the things you asked earlier, and I'm gonna to respond to both of them, but one of the things you asked earlier is what can we do going forward from here? And what came up for me um, during this is to have the resources available for people in the communities that you're in. So what comes up for me here is, is ensuring that there are resources available so when people are asking, okay, so that's me, so where can I go in my community? Uh, so between Unity Fellowship Church, Minority Age Project, in the meantime, and other organizations, there are organizations in community that can support black, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender individuals. I 
think it's important for communities to have solid support networks, and that's one of the things that someone said uh, in, in the film, I think the therapist said this, is that you surround yourself with a support network that's, that's in your corner, that's on your front row, that they're supporting you every step of the way. Um, and it's when people, and, and, and that's the alternative to having networks that, that may not be as healthy. Okay, so I'm running to the park rather than find, finding my good girlfriend, good boyfriend that I can hang with and, and do things with, you know. Or I'm going to a party where they're going to have drugs and all kinds of things taking place rather than finding uh, a, a men's or women's or transgender support group network of people that I can go to. And I think those are the kinds of things that would be important to me. So as, as you, I know in this community, we have, we have a number of those networks, especially here in the church um, and then some other community areas.